Hello everyone and welcome back. In this new lesson we're going to talk about the first type of router guards that we are going to cover in this course which are can activate guards. First of all what is exactly a router guard? A router guard is a special type of router specific angular service that gets invoked before a certain route transition takes place. Using the service we can determine for example if the routing transition is allowed or not. In the concrete case of can activate router guards these will be invoked before the routing transition takes place. We're going to be using the can activate guard to determine if the user can see the target route destination. This is very useful, for example, in the case of having certain pages in our application that we want to protect from certain users. Let's give a concrete example. Let's take here our courses routing module, which is the routing configuration of the courses lazy loaded module. We can see here that we have the course component, which is the component that gets visible whenever we click here on the view course button. Now this page that we see here with all the courses, we're going to leave it public and accessible to any user. On the other hand, the course component, we would like to protect it from unauthenticated users. As we have seen, we have here at the level of our application an authentication store service, which allows us via this observable here to determine if the user is currently logged into the application or not. Let's then use this in order to decide if the user can access or not the course component. And to take that decision, we're going to be creating a new can activate router guard. This is a special type of service that the router is going to call in order to decide if the route transition is allowed or not. And so the name can activate guard. Let's then create our first guard here in our services folder inside our app folder. Let's create here a new file that we're going to call simply off.guard.ts. And inside it, we are going to implement our authentication guard. Let's define here a new class. We're going to call it off guard. And we're going to have this class be a plain angular injectable. This means that we can inject any services that we need on its constructor. Let's go ahead and add here a constructor and let's inject here the authentication store service that we're going to be needing in order to determine if the user is authenticated or not. Besides the authentication store service, we are also going to be needing the router service. The router service is going to be used to redirect the user to, let's say, the home page of the application in case that the user is not authorized to see the target destination of the current route transition. So let's go ahead and inject here the Angular router service in our constructor. Now let's go ahead and transform this plain Angular injectable into a can activate guard simply by implementing the can activate router interface. Now let's go ahead and implement the only method that we need, which is the can activate method. We are going to be importing here the multiple arguments that we need, including the activated route snapshot. We are going to import here also the router state. And now we need to decide about the return type of our can activate method. As usual, we are writing our application in reactive style, so what we want to return is an observable. This observable is going to be returning true or false, depending if the user can access the target screen of the route navigation or not. Also, if the router guard wants to perform a redirect to another page, such as for example in the case when the user is not authorized to see the target page and we would like to return him for example to the login page or to the course's home screen. In those cases, besides a boolean, the can activate method can also return a URL tree, which is a type that encapsulates the URL to which we want to redirect the user in case that the user can't see the target route. Let's then see how we can implement can activate. As we have seen, we have here the authentication store service and in its public API, we have 
here conveniently an is logged in observable, which returns a boolean, which will be true if the user is logged in. So we could be tempted to simply return this observable here, and with this we would have a valid implementation of can activate. We are going to take this one step further and we are also going to implement here some redirection logic. So if the user is correctly logged in, we do want to return true here as the value emitted by the observable and allow the routing transition to go through. On the other hand, if the user is not authenticated, then this means that the user is trying to access a protected screen which is unavailable to authenticated users. In that case, we want to redirect the user to the login page. We can implement so by returning here an URL tree instead of a boolean. And we can implement that in the following way. We are going to be applying here the RxJS map operator and we are going to check here if the user is logged in or not. So let's remember this flag logged in is emitted by the is logged in observable. So if the user is logged in, then we want to emit as the value of the resulting observable, the value true. Otherwise, we want to perform a redirection. We can perform the redirection in the following way by returning here an URL tree representing the URL of the login page. We can build conveniently such URL by calling here the router service and by calling the method parse URL. To parse URL, we are going to be passing the string form of the URL that we want to create, which is slash login. So with this, we are passing an URL tree pointing to the login page in case that the user is not logged in. And with this, we have finished the initial implementation of our authentication guard. Let's go ahead and let's plug it into our application. We are going to switch here to the course's routing module and we're going to start by adding the authentication guard here in the providers of our course's routing module. This way, we are plugging the authentication guard in the Angular dependency injection system. Now, we want to declare this service as being a router guard. And for that, we need to head over here to our course component and we need to protect it by passing the guard here in the can activate property. Now for one same route, we might have multiple can activate guards. So that's why we are passing here an array. Let's pass as the only value of this array, our authentication guard. Notice that if we have multiple guards applied to the same component, we should implement them in a completely independent way, meaning that we should have no expectations that one guard is executed before the other. And with this, we have plugged our authentication guard into the router, so let's go ahead and try it out. We have here the new version of the application and we are starting from an unauthenticated state. As we can see, when we reload here the application, we can still access the home component. And that's because this is not protected by a guard. Let's now see what happens if we try to access the course component by clicking on view course without having logged in first. So if we click here, we're going to see that the router guard is redirecting us to the login page as expected. Now notice the following. This functionality of the router authentication guard is just for user experience purposes in our front end. This does not actually protect any data in the back end. This is just a front end construct in order to avoid having to show to the users broken pages whenever they accidentally access a page that they are not authorized to access, which can happen, for example, if someone sends them a link to a page that the user cannot access. For example, an administrator accidentally forwards a link to a user to a page that only an administrator can see. So the router guard would avoid in that situation having to show to the user a broken screen that the user cannot access. But this does not protect any data on the backend, so it does not ensure any backend security. Authentication guards work only for the frontend and only for user experience purposes. They do not ensure actual security. 
Now let's go ahead and let's log in to the application. I'm going to click here on the login button and now we are logged in as we can see here via the presence of the user profile picture. Now, this time around, if we click here on view course, everything will work as expected and we can see the course correctly being displayed on the screen. Now, let's see what happens if we log out from the application. So we have logged out and we have remained here on the same page. This is just for our testing convenience, as in a normal application, whenever the user logs out, it immediately should get redirected to the login page. We have not implemented that logic here in our application root component, where the logout logic is, but we could easily do so by using the router service to redirect the user to login immediately after the logout. In the case of our sample application, it's convenient to stay here on the same page after logout so that we can perform the following test. Let's see what happens if we refresh the browser and we try to access this URL that we have here, the localhost 4200 slash courses slash angular router course URL. So this is the URL for a given course in the application. If we refresh the browser, we are going to see that the authentication guard kicks in and that we are correctly redirected to the login page as expected. So it looks like our authentication guard is working perfectly, but there is only one small catch that we are going to learn about and fix in the next lesson.